big news in the airline industry. In May 2025, Finnair became the first airline to create a native order, a step toward making airline bookings a lot simpler. This breakthrough is part of one order transformation, designed to make the whole booking process smoother and easier for everyone. But what exactly is one order, and why is it so important? Let's dive in and explore how it's on track to change air travel. But first, let's take a step back and look at air distribution as a whole. What do we see? It turns out that even in the era of same-day delivery and one-click shopping, airlines still rely on legacy systems that date back to the 1960s, long before the internet was even a thing. Well, not entirely, of course. At least, we don't have to call a travel agent and wait for them to contact an airline to book a flight anymore. We can buy tickets with a few clicks, either on the carrier's website or one of the many OTAs. And thankfully, paper tickets are a thing of the past, so we don't have to deal with that hassle when boarding. But behind the scenes, the processes and technologies really haven't changed much. Airlines are still heavily reliant on GDSs to distribute their products. The strange part, GDSs, not airlines, control what passengers see on those travel websites. Because of outdated communication standards, carriers can't pass photos, videos, or detailed descriptions. This limits how they present content on third-party platforms. Totally not something we'd expect from today's digital retail. With no direct interaction with travelers, they can't offer personalized services, bundle or upsell their products. Plus, their old passenger service systems don't allow them to include offerings from third-party suppliers. So, in a GDS-dominated world, airlines have little control over how their offers are shaped. And on the order side, it's no better. The PNR that holds all the flight details is nothing like a modern shopping cart. You can't add new passengers or combine several trips into one. If that wasn't complicated enough, you need two more documents to complete the order, an e-ticket and an EMD. Well, let's say you have a family of four traveling on a connecting flight, uh, each with a bag and a seat, right? In today's world, that would involve two PNRs, it involve uh, four e-tickets, and up to 24 EMBs, right? So that's 30 different reference numbers for a customer. This age-old structure creates inefficiencies at every turn. Data is fragmented, leading to inconsistencies and confusion. Airlines face expensive and time-consuming reconciliation processes to match everything up. Just on ticketing and PNRs, we spend millions of dollars of certain suppliers are sitting in the room, by the way, to making sure that the tickets and the PNRs are compatible with each other and are not sent an ADM to the travel agent, can you please pay the difference? Why? Because they are two different entities which have their own life, which are there. There's an enormous amount of complexities of processes the airlines have. And when disruptions occur, whether it's a flight delay or a change in services, assisting customers becomes a complex and frustrating task, requiring agents to dig through multiple records just to find the right information. So, Airline retailing today feels kind of like shopping with a paper catalog, while e-commerce has evolved into personalized experiences with unified shopping carts and seamless upselling. Airlines are stuck with rigid, customer-unfriendly processes. Clearly, something had to change, and the industry developed a solution. IATA's NDC initiative, launched in 2012, aims to modernize air retailing. With new messaging standards that allow for rich content exchange, airlines can bypass DDSs and regain control over their offers when they sell flights through intermediaries. However, NDC and modern retailing are not only about offer control, there's also the order management side. And that's where one order steps in, an industry standard for a single unified record. It holds all the details of the traveler's booking. Instead of having three separate documents for the flight reservation, the ticket, and extra services, one order combines everything under a single reference number. So let's make a distinction here. 
NDC is the overarching framework that supports the entire shift to modern retailing. On the other hand, one order focuses on streamlining one key part of the process, order management. Simply put, NDC changes the whole process, while one order replaces the PNRs, EMDs, and e-tickets with one document. Sounds pretty sensible, doesn't it? In fact, all the parties involved would benefit from adopting one order. First up, airlines. For them, one order is a game changer in terms of efficiency, customer service quality, and cost savings. Sebastian Turen, IATA head of the One Order program. One Order brings three major areas of improvement. The first one is better customer service. The second one is solving the inefficiency of data reconciliation between PNRs, e-ticket, and EMDs. This is costly to airlines. Thirdly, the industry believes that having a retail-oriented platforms will drive innovation in the delivery of new products. Streamlined operations. So no more juggling multiple documents for reservations, tickets, and ancillary services. With everything under one order, airlines can streamline back office operations, reduce errors, and save on reconciliation. Control over data. Airlines can finally see it all, what they sell, and to whom. That visibility is the foundation of retailing. It allows airlines to analyze sales patterns, personalize offers, and adjust pricing, exactly how online retailers fine-tune their strategies. And it opens the door to additional revenue. Why do you think low-cost airlines have better margins? Maybe one of the reasons is that they get up to 60% of their revenue from selling ancillaries. Full-service carriers settle for way less. The industry average is around 14%. Of course, the business models are very different, but historically low-cost carriers rely on direct channels as the core of their distribution. It allows them to be more agile and customer-centric, and benefit from personalizing their offers and upselling strategies. For legacy airlines that sell mainly through GDSs, billions of dollars are left on the table, not to mention savings on distribution commissions. Easier interlining. One order potentially simplifies interlining too. The idea is that when two airlines need to exchange booking info for a connecting passenger, they can share a standardized order message instead of relying on legacy ticket and PNR synchronization processes. This is especially critical for partnerships between traditional, full-service carriers and low-cost airlines that don't issue tickets. For passengers, the change is equally significant. One order enhances their experience, giving them one single reference number for their entire booking, from flights to services. So we're getting away from this uh, area where customers need to keep track of a PNR locator, where their kind of uh, where their reservation and their seat itinerary is, the e-ticket where their right to fly is, and an EMD where all of the other ancillary options that they purchased are housed. So really moving into a, a very modern environment, well, a, a more current environment, where the customer has a single record for their journey and everything they purchased. So with one order, travelers' lives become simpler, especially during disruptions or when making itinerary changes. Next, intermediaries. The OTAs and TMCs that help airlines sell their products. The thing is that today, distributors must use different workflows for full-service carriers and ticketless low-cost carriers. With one order, they can work in a more standardized way. With a single confirmation containing all details, the booking process becomes simpler, regardless of the airline's business model or technology capability. And what about GDSs, which happen to be the biggest technology vendors? To stay relevant, Sabre and Amadeus have no choice but to keep up with the times, modernizing their PSS platforms and adapting to the new NDC booking flows. Newer tech firms like Excelia and Flyer, which provide modern offer and order management systems, are pushing the established players to keep up. So to continue leading and compete with these up-and-comers, the big guys are forced to invest in modernization. But while the industry giants scramble to stay competitive, 
The bigger picture is hard to ignore. All these changes are pushing the entire aviation sector toward a new way of doing business, one that's expected to unlock some serious potential. For the industry as a whole, the new retailing approach is expected to drive over $45 billion in extra revenue. With such potential, you'd expect airlines to jump on board immediately. But have they? The conversion is going to be extremely complex. If we think NDC is a big deal, one order is going to be bigger. It's going to be ripping apart, effectively, the, the core of how most airlines work. Airlines seemed excited about the change, but adoption has been slower than expected. While seven out of 10 carriers acknowledge the transition's importance, they also realize that it's a complex, multi-year journey. To be more specific, they expect the transformation to take three to seven years and cost between 50 and $100 million for each carrier. And most of them haven't even started. As of mid-2025, only 27% of airlines had taken any significant steps toward offer and order transformation, even though 66% already work with NDC to some extent. So what's causing the delay? Well, first, there's technology. Airlines have been using complex, outdated systems for decades. Moving to one order means overhauling the entire IT infrastructure. Moreover, during the transition, carriers will likely operate legacy and new systems in parallel, which adds complexity. Some expect such duality to last for over a decade. All this requires massive investments in new technology, training, and systems integration. With current thin profit margins, this definitely feels sort of scary for airlines, especially when their existing systems are still functional. Then there's the organizational change. One order is more than just a tech update. It requires airlines to rethink their business processes from the ground up. Teams that used to work in silos, like ticketing, reservations, and accounting, must become more integrated. It's a big shift in how airlines operate internally, and not every team is ready for that change. Another hurdle is the industry-wide coordination. For one order to work seamlessly, all players in the travel ecosystem have to be on the same page. That includes airlines, technology vendors, travel agencies, and GDSs. But these companies all have their own timelines, priorities, and systems. Achieving universal adoption means getting everyone to move forward together, which is close to impossible. So where are we now? Let's take a look at how one order adoption has been unfolding over the last decade. In 2016, about one year after the first mention of One Order, IATA's Passenger Services Conference formally adopted a resolution to develop the One Order Standard. This was the green light for airlines and technology vendors to start experimenting with One Order. And some jumped in right away. While the regulators were still elaborating on the details, Amadeus and British Airways had already started testing the new protocols. By 2019, Lufthansa became the first major airline to get IATA's One Order certification, followed by others like Singapore Airlines and China Southern. Of course, these pilot programs couldn't have been successfully completed without collaboration with IT providers. In 2019, Sabre became the first PSS certified as One Order capable, with Navitaire from Amadeus following in 2020. In 2022, IATA doubled down on its commitment by launching the Modern Airline Retailing Program and an Airline Retailing Consortium, pushing toward 100% offers and orders across the industry. Fast forward to 2025, and IATA optimistically expects a complete transition to the new framework by 2030. But let's be real, it's looking pretty unlikely. While dozens of pilot programs are underway, only Finnair has officially claimed to have created the native order. Despite all of IATA's efforts, many airlines are still hesitant to invest in the change, as the business case and tangible benefits aren't clear. 
whole other stream inside our program around transitioning our company to orders. And th this is gonna be a multi-year program and we do not have a, an end date for this journey. So, despite the potential and hoopla, the road to full adoption of one order is still a long one, with major hurdles still in the way, especially on the tech side. It's clear that one order is more dream than reality. And while there is some progress, the industry still has a way to go before we see one order fully integrated. Let's watch how this transformation unfolds together. Check out our NDC video to learn more about how it powers offer and order management. And stay tuned for more travel industry news.